<clears throat> All right, guys. Um, we're going to be reviewing the main event, UFC 81, Noguera versus Tim Sylvia. Um, so this is the last, this is the third round, and this is the last round of this particular fight. Uh, this whole time, if you watch, the, if you get a chance to watch the whole fight, you will notice that Tim Sylvia is doing a, a great job of controlling the distance, punishing Noguera. Uh, Noguera, in the meantime, is doing everything he can in his power to try to clinch and try to pull half guard. Um, and Tim Sylvia is just doing a phenomenal job. But beginning of the third round, let's get it. Again, right there, Noguera, right off the bat, he kind of does a, a fake, kind of like a clinch of a sort, and then he immediately shoots in for the, the half guard, almost like a deep half guard of, of sorts. Um, he tries to go into this position here. Some uh, some people call this like the uh, octopus guard. Uh, the only difference is that Tim Siller does a great job of using his long wingspan and reaching over in front of Noguera's head. Now, if Noguera would have been able to clear his head underneath Tim Sylvia's um, arm, he would have been into the actual octopus guard, but he didn't, so that's that. So he settles for the half guard position. He's trying to go for like a Kimura, as you see right there. Um, now let's take a look back here a little bit. Right here, um, Tim Sylvia's doing an okay job, but his base is going to be his biggest downfall. His base is very wide. I mean, granted, these are big guys, they're heavyweights, but his base is very wide. Um, he would need to have this knee closer to the hips in order to control this bottom leg of Noguera, but he didn't, and so that's going to come back and bite him in the rear uh, later on in the fight. Again, right there, base super wide. Uh, Noguera's doing a great job of controlling the, the wrist, controlling the hands. Uh, you're going to look for him to go for this underhook on this thigh. And you can see him looking at it, okay? So he's pulling on this arm. He's pushing on that arm in. This which is gonna, probably going to cause Tim Silva to get his hand up and out, which gives him a better opportunity to go inside. Just right there, he goes for the underhook. Um, but again, uh, Tim Silva does a, a good job of keeping his head on the inside and using this forearm right here as a bridge or as a frame, I should say, against Noguera's uh, throat, making it very hard for this hook right here with his arm to be effective. And so then, uh, let me turn this button. So again, base is very wide on Tim Sylvia, uh, but he's still doing a phenomenal job of keeping the inside control, meaning his hands are going to be always on the, on the inside of Noguera's arms. Noguera's doing a great job of, of going for that wrist control the whole time, as you can see that. So here he does something interesting. He brings his shin inside. So he brings uh, his outside leg in front of Tim Sylvia's uh, chest. Now this could be a setup, or this is the setup, I should say. He uses the frame and it kind of acts like he may be pushing into it. I feel like that's what he's kind of giving the feel to Tim Sylvia, pushing against his chest. So Tim Sylvia feels that his leg Right here, his right leg is no longer being uh, clasped by Noguera's legs because it's you know they're already open. So he's going to try to decide to stand up, disengage, if you will. Um, but his base again is too wide, too big. He makes the mistake of stepping to the side here, and we'll see that in a minute. Right there, see that he steps directly across the hips. He should have stepped back if he was going to go in this direction. Um, but unfortunately, that didn't happen. Makes it makes a big opening right here. Noguera still has the wrist control. He dives for that underhook. Tim Silva tries to sprawl. And when he tries to sprawl, no, uh, Noguera gets him again in the half guard with this underhook. And Tim Silva's base is now extremely wide. Noguera rolls him to his left side. Okay. Now, this is very interesting here. Tim Sivas still managed to get his elbow to frame against the floor. That prevents that momentum from continuing over. And this is a good spot here where most people in Noguera's position will abandon the sweep. Uh, but 
with years of experience under his belt, Noguera will adjust by using this leg right here, his left leg, right there. He kicks the leg out to load up Tim Sylvia's hips over his shoulders as he's pulling on that underhook towards him like this. Um, and that causes Tim Sylvia's hips to come over his shoulders and to come over his wrist and his elbow, thus making this frame of Tim Sylvia pretty much useless. Right there. Now, one thing here too that uh, Tim Sylvia uh, does also is, let me rewind right here, is that when he gets in that position, he goes for this control behind Nogueira's head. Um, he should have kept this forearm in front and underneath the chin, but instead he reaches to hold on and hook behind the head. Um, that's only going to help Nogueira right here. When he readjusts the momentum, him still holding on to, that, to the head is pulling Nogueira on top of him. So it's, it's a bad ordeal at that point. Uh, Nogueira being wise, um, he posts with his hand and he's coming up to his knees while still using this underhook to push into uh, the knee, which causes the legs to split, while he still has his both legs pinching on Tim Silvio's right leg. Right there. And when he feels that Tim Silvio is pushing back hard with his left leg, he lets it go, and he does a little hip switch. Now you can see here's the big difference between Noguera and Tim Silvia's uh, base. No Noguera's is very snug. It's very tight to Tim Silvia's hips right here. Even though he's using his hand to, to frame, it doesn't matter. What matters is that Noguera is able to use that knee to get closer to the hip. And you're going to see him do the little hip switch, which means he's going to rotate his uh, right hip up and he's going to drop his left hip past his left knee. So he's going to tuck the knee inside. Right there. Um, let me rewind again. Boom, right there. He does it. Okay, pretty slick, pretty smooth. Uh, very benign, but very effective. Um, so right here, you're going to see Tim Sylvia actually do a great job of going for this underhook. And he's going to defend in front of this bicep to prevent Noguera from punching him effectively. Um, so right there, he does a great job of defending the punch, and he swims his hand for the underhook, right there. Okay, so right here, Noguera is now setting him up, okay? Uh, he is working his legs over to that direction. It's, it's, it doesn't seem like it's much, but it's a lot. Um, he's going to post on Tim Silva's chin with his palm, causing his spine to be stretched, and he's going to allow himself to be stepped over his head. Because he has this underhook, Noguera is going to get the overhook here in a second. Right there, Tim Silvia does a great job defending. Noguera uh, steps. Now, no, when Noguera steps over, his hips are completely away from Tim Silvia's hips. That's what Tim Silvia felt the need to bridge up hard and turn over on him. However, when he did that, he didn't uh, account for this overhook right here. Now, this is something that probably worked for him very well in, in many positions, but when you go against a very high level technical grappler like Noguera, it's not what you want to do. And here's why. Right there. Okay, as he's coming up, let's rewind it. As he bucks and he's turning towards Noguera's leg, he's going to try to chase this single right here. He's going to try to come up on the single. single. Um, Tim Sylvia does the mistake which every beginner does and which many heavyweight grapplers will do is when they bridge up and they turn, they come up to their forearm. They, they brace on their forearm and their elbow. That's a huge no-no. He should have rolled to his side, he should buck in a bridge and roll to his side and be belly, belly down, belly flat down on the ground. And he should have used this arm to reach between Noguera's legs to get a hold of this other hand that he has back here so that he can actually come up on that single. Um, by him framing on the ground right here, that obviously open up the neck for Noguera to get to the front headlock, which he does right there. Okay, so now Noguera has this guillotine front headlock position. He's got the arm in, uh, which doesn't matter. And then as soon as he feels Tim Sylvia pushing his weight off the ground with this uh, forearm right there, he will slide 
Nogueira will slide this knee underneath his belly, right there, okay? Let's back up a little bit. Now, because of the momentum that Tim Silva is rotating, that means that his hips are going to go to that left side, to his left side. So as soon as he pulls guard, Nogueira, he still feels the momentum is going over to that side. And he has to because um, if Tim Silva stays on this side right here, the choke gets stronger. So he's trying to jump over, trying to step over Nogueira's legs to get to the opposite side, which is going to give him the better chance of defending the guillotine. Now, Nogueira, being the, the, the smart grappler that he is, he knows that's going to happen. So he uses this right leg and brings it up very high, brings that knee very high, and he will capture Tim Sylvia's hips inside the, inside the, the knee, right there. Okay, you see that? So Tim Sylvia's doing a great job of trying to go over. He's posting on his head, posting on that arm, and he's trying to step over. But Nogueira senses that, kicks the leg very high, the knee is very high up to the ground, Captures his hips, gives him enough space to bring this other left leg right here to the hip, right there. Boom, perfect. Okay, so now both of his knees are on top of the pelvis right here. All Nogueira has to do now, he's going to have to get his feet together, uh, kind of lock them, but he's actually pinching with the inside of his thighs here. Oops, let me rewind. Here and here to create a push onto Tim Sylvia's hips. So Nogueira is going to be lifting his hips up and pushing with the inside of his thighs. As he's doing that, he's already has his hands holding on underneath and he's going to rotate kind of like this choking arm right here, his, his elbow, and he's going to try to bring it down to the side, to his left side, right there. Okay, so he's got the, the clasp, he's pinching, He's going to start to push his hips inside, which is going to cause this elbow to kind of bring like this rotation down here. And you can see that right here, his, his, uh, his choke is already deep, deep, deep. Okay. One way you can tell is Tim Tilby's head is literally parallel to his shoulder. Okay. His head should normally be right here, but he's bent. It's very tight. Again, and you can see that Okay, it's obviously already very tight, but watch how Nogueira, he will kind of roll to his left side. Tim Silva being the big guy, he will force himself back to, to his left side, but he first gets rolled to the right a little bit. He starts to tap and he's forcing over to the left side. See that? He gets crunched down. Again, look at that angle of the neck. I mean, holy cow. His head is supposed to be about right here and it's almost a 90 degree angle <laughs> to, his, uh, to the base of his neck. He's already tapping. And you can see right here how Nogueira still has a very tight, tight grip on there. Man, that's, that was nice. Very, very nice uh, setup. He pulled in guard, half guard, deep half guard, um, swept him over, sensed that Tim Sylvia was going to, you know, push into him, which was very typical at the time. And uh, man, got that, that guillotine. Once again, we'll see a quick motion. Pulls it in deep. Tries to go for the octopus guard. Nope. Half guard wrist control. Right there. Tim Silva's base is very wide. That's, that was his big mistake right there. Which sucks for Tim Silva because he was winning the fight, but hey, it wasn't in the cards that night for him. Uh, wrist control, very good. You know, fake him out with that shin guard right there. And then, man, he rolls him over. Now, again, let's talk about the little sweep right here. Like, it doesn't seem like much, but, man, let me tell you. Um, Nogueira's ability to adjust right there with him kicking the leg over. Man, that's, that's yes, that is years and years and years of him grappling. He knows and he understands the momentum, and he knows that he needs to make his, like, the bottom leg – wider to kind of reach and pull himself up on top of him. Uh, that is that is a lot of high level stuff right there. And that is something that, that you acquire over the course of time. But again, it's very subtle. And that's why jujitsu is so effective when you do it correctly. It's very subtle. You don't really see it. It's more of a feel. But Nogueira did a great job of readjusting 
the momentum that Tim Sylvia uh, stopped just by his sheer size. Because Tim Sylvia is a big guy. I think he's like 6'7". So, yeah, man, that was just nice. I, I just cannot stress enough just how nice that is. So, yeah, so that was a, uh, that was a nice little uh, look into that. And uh, be sure to check out the full fight so that you can actually get the idea what I was talking about when Noguera is constantly trying to pull the half guard on him. Um, I will say this. This fight is very hard to find on the Internet, the full fight anyways. You'll find bits and pieces of it here and there. But uh, don't, um, don't get too discouraged. Just, just, look, just keep looking for it. Now, this is another point of view here. Um, there's another point of view right here of the sweep that happens from a different angle. And you see that. Man, that was just pretty slick. Again, you'll see the leg being kicked out right there. Yeah, that was just, that was nice. That was nice. Again, that's, that's all I can say. That was pretty nice. <laughs> Cool. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed that. And again, check it out. UFC 81 may fight Big Nog versus Tim Sylvia.